I know those knocks. Come on in, guys. Wow, what's that? My hobby. Working on complex things relaxes me. Have you ever seen such a beautiful clock, George? <laughs> if you like it now, watch what happens every hour. What do you think? Very impressive. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it, George. Oh, we should go. The rocket presentation is starting soon. Are you coming with us, George? Or do you want to stay here and watch the clock? <laughs> Well, if it's okay with Professor Wiseman, it's okay with me. Now, if you want to see the little people play again, move the minute hand once around to 12. <laughs> Have fun. How long does it take to build a clock like that? Oh, about three years. Oh, that reminds me. I'll be right back. George, be a good little monkey. Exactly. George wanted to see the little people again. That looked like George's friend, Compass, the almost homing pigeon. Because when all the other homing pigeons honed in on the statue, he almost made it. It was Compass, all right. George was happy to see his friend, the pigeon. And Compass was happy to see his friend, the... Well, whatever George was. George wanted Compass to see Professor Wiseman's clock in action. He couldn't fix the minute hand, and that's what made the little people play. He knew they were in there somewhere. <laughs> George remembered there was another way into the clock, the back. When you take something apart, it's a good idea to pay attention to what went where. It was a perfect day to just walk down the street smelling. So, that's what George did.
George's nose took him to all the best smells. <sighs> then he reached monkey nose heaven. Hello, George. It smells better back here, you know. George couldn't believe all those different, plain-smelling things could become an amazing donut. George was wondering what kind of magic donut makers knew when his ears got in the way of his nose. George's friend, Yoki, was locked in combat with her arch enemy, the extra-large cutesy bow. George didn't understand Tabby, but he listened politely. <coughs> Gnocchi was thrilled to be free from looking cute. George was officially a cat hero. George almost forgot he was smelling today. Then, Chef Piscetti's kitchen grabbed his nose. <laughs> Chef Piscetti's kitchen was like a, a nose circus. Mm. Gnocchi, il mio gato dolce. You've lost two pretty ribbon gumsy gumsy. Ba -ba -do -ba -do. There. Now she's cute. <laughs> Welcome, Giorgio. How is your friend, Capello Giallo Grande? <laughs> oh, I can't play. I'm making a very special meal for famous restaurant critic, Salitesio. Oh, hi. <laughs> when she likes a place, business booms. So it's very important that everything be perfect. She has the delicate taste. You said there'd be fresh bread. <laughs> I don't see any bread here. Well, her taste is delicate, <laughs> but her voice, uh, not so much. <laughs> this hard stuff was spaghetti? Didn't smell like anything. George wanted to replace his broken piece. He'd seen the chef put the rest of it in the pot. It didn't smell like much, and the steam coming out was hot. George had to be careful. It had changed. Maybe, maybe it wasn't just donut makers. Maybe all kitchens were magic. Here was a pot that turned crisp things into floppy things. What else could it turn floppy? A soft floppy egg. That'd be funny. Good candidate for floppification. Hunley, the doorman's dachshund, loved his lobby to be clean and organized, just like him. Good morning, Hunley. Don't you look very shiny and sleek today? made him an excellent finder of lost things. My keys! Thank you, Hundley. <coughs> Dante says thank you, Hundley. <coughs> Having sharp hearing, made him an excellent squeak detector. Oh, 
good ears, Huntley. A doorman's door must look and sound perfect at all times. And his uniform must be spotless. But Hunley felt his most important job was to protect the place from George, the absolute opposite of all that is organized and neat. Package for 217. Let's go, Hundley. 217. Oh, no! I'm out of uniform. Delivery, I rush right up. Right on time. I buy and sell autograph balls. Very expensive. This one's Freddy Frikikio. I have a lot more balls coming today. Valuable collector's items. Don't worry. Huntley and I will make sure they're safe. Out of uniform. Ugh. A doorman's uniform is as important as his door. Huh? What's wrong, Huntley? <laughs> Careful. That's full of... <laughs> oil. Oh, no! This is my last clean shirt! <laughs> a doorman must be spotless. I have to go to the dry cleaners. I won't be long. You're in charge, Hunley. <laughs> Hunley knew the first order of business. Watch George. <laughs> George never realized how much he liked the doorman's uniform. Hunley had never gotten a salute before. He must have been doing an exceptionally good job. Oh? Hey -ya! <laughs> a doorman's uniform is as important as his door. Hunley had to get that monkey out of uniform. <laughs> but he still had a job to do. I see you have a new partner, Hunley. You're both so handsome. Time is of the essence. How quickly can you clean an oil stain? An oil stain about this size? An oil stain exactly that size. That exact oil stain. I, I have no idea until I try. Then try. I can wait because I know Hunley will keep the lobby in perfect order. <laughs> Hunley tried to get the coat off George. <laughs> Which is how he found out George was ticklish. <laughs> One thing George liked about Lake Wanasink Lake was that he never felt alone, even when he couldn't see other animals. He could tell they were out there. George, uh, hi. Uh, how about a hand? <laughs> yeah, I'm preparing an exhibit on local wildlife for the Town Nature Society, and the baby alligator lizard I was studying just disappeared. <laughs> oh, thanks. Have fun at the lake. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> wow! You saw all those animals? <laughs> you only heard them? <laughs> hey! Animal sounds would be great in the exhibit. You want to help me again? <laughs> Okay, just point the microphone toward the sound till you hear it nice and loud on the headphones. Then, push this red button to record it. Remember, the closer you are to an animal, the louder it gets. But don't get too close. This was simple for a smart monkey. All he had to do was follow the sound as it got louder and... <laughs> he tracked one woodpecker and thought he heard a second one. But maybe sounds aren't as simple as they sound. George was collecting pictures of all the sounds he had heard outside. <laughs> then he heard a new one, inside. George knew how to track a sound. This was different. It got louder, then went silent. Then it was far away again. This called for a second opinion. 151, 152, <laughs> wait. Oh, hi, George. Yeah, can you wait till I'm done with the moth census? Okay, I'm coming. Oh, that's just the smoke detector, George. It needs a new battery. George wasn't sure this was the same sound he'd heard before. And now, back to my moths. What? There it was again, and it didn't come from the smoke detector. That thing was here somewhere. And he knew he could find it. Of course, it must have gone out the window. It was loud, it was soft, it was here, it was gone. George had been counting the minutes all morning. He could hardly wait. Today was dog show day. Looking forward to seeing your first dog show, George? Dog show. The idea of dogs putting on a show sounded better than anything he'd ever heard. <laughs> uh, if that's Professor Wiseman, would you please let her in? <laughs> it's Professor Wiseman. <laughs> oh, hello, George. Ready to go? Ready? I have never seen him so excited. I can't go, remember? I, I have to finish crunching these numbers. Uh... Bye. Uh... Have fun, you two. And, uh, George. Uh... Be a good little monkey, <laughs> exactly. And close the door, please. <laughs>
George got more and more excited until the show began. And he found out that a dog show wasn't dogs putting on a show. It was people showing their dogs to each other. George didn't exactly pay attention. How'd you enjoy the show, George? Aren't all the different breeds fascinating? Would you like to see the winners up close? George got a big surprise. Because when he actually looked at the big ones, and the small ones, and the crazily hairy ones, he thought the dog show was great. Have you ever seen so many unforgettable dogs before? <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like you had fun. <laughs> I hope he wasn't too much trouble. He was no trouble at all. Wow, that's great to hear. Gotta run. See you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. So, you like the dog show, huh? <laughs> George wanted to tell the man about all the unforgettable dogs he saw. <laughs> but he only remembered three. It's okay, you can tell me later. Oh, would you do me a big favor and mail these letters? I made a sandwich if you're hungry. And when I'm done, I want to hear about all the dogs. George was afraid he wouldn't be able to tell the man more because no matter how hard he tried, he could only remember three. It was a perfect day to explore Lake Wanasink Lake. Bill called it picture perfect. You know, George, nature photography requires skill, patience, and timing. Remember, George, to cross a log, you need exact foot placement and a keen sense of balance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are tadpoles, George. A common form of pond life. Ah. I guess a city kid like you never sees any real wildlife, huh? Hey, why don't we take some back home and observe their growth? <laughs> While collecting tadpoles, both proper net control and collecting jar placement are crucial. Oh. Hey, how'd you like to look after them for me? Uh -huh. Tadpoles like the lettuce I boiled for him? <laughs> now remember, I want you to watch them closely for me. They do some amazing things as they grow. <laughs> Keep them safe in that bowl, and they should be just fine. And so on that gloriously sunny day, George became the proud caretaker of a bowl full of tadpoles. Ha, ha, ha.
The tadpole's bowl was small. George thought they deserved to stretch their, well, whatever a tadpole stretches, and decided to let them enjoy a quick swim in the lagoon while he went to get their lunch. Tadpoles be. What would he tell Bill? Hey, George. Lagoon exploration is fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> oh, by the way, how are my tadpoles doing? <laughs> Time to go back to the city, George. George hoped the tadpoles would be okay without a monkey to feed or protect them. Caterpillar is in its pupa stage. I bet kids like you never see that in the city, huh? <laughs> hey, have my tadpoles done anything amazing yet? <laughs> Weeks went by before George returned to the lake. George still couldn't find the tadpoles. But they had to be in the lagoon. Unless... The man with the yellow hat always said the same thing about rainy days in the country. This is great weather. For ducks? And when the rain stopped, it was great weather for monkeys. Mud that sounded like a duck when he squished it. Yes, it was duck mud. He knew he didn't squish that quack out. He had discovered self-quacking duck mud. <laughs> Okay, it wasn't duck mud. There were real ducks. <gasps> Puddle ducks. See, George, I told you it was great weather for ducks. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be busy, George. Have fun. Jumpy Squirrel suddenly became aware of two things. The rain had stopped, and that hairy duck looked familiar. Jumpy Squirrel usually jumped away from anything new. Peking Duck was the same way. Maybe that's why they became good friends instantly. <laughs> 
George played by the puddle all day. He even had ducks in his dreams. I always knew you were meant to be a duck. Have a nice flight. For centuries, people have wondered what squirrels dream about. The next morning, George raced out for another day with puddle ducks. Something was wrong. The puddle was smaller, a lot smaller. sure shrunk. <laughs> well, puddles soak into the ground. They don't last forever. <laughs> ducks go where there's plenty of water. When the water's gone, they'll leave. It's just what ducks do. You want to come with me to mend fences at the Rankins? Or play with the ducks before they go? For a professional lobby dog like Hunley, it's nice to catch a nap when the lobby is peaceful. But when George lives in your building, guarding against monkey mishaps is always more important than sleep. Good morning! Headed out to have fun? No, nope. going to Dr. Baker for my annual checkup. <laughs> right on time as usual. What oh, didn't you bring? <laughs> oh, George, hello. <laughs> have a seat in the waiting room. I'll call you when the doctor's ready. George learned that the thing you need most in a doctor's waiting room is patience. Huh? A mysterious sound. George listened as quietly as he could. Dr. Baker will see you now. Oh, great. Come on, George. We're finally getting out of the waiting room. <laughs> George gave up hope of hearing any mystery sound past that sneezing. <laughs> I'm still waiting for Dr. Gesund. Well, I'm sure he'll be right with you. <laughs> Excuse me, has Dr. Gesund seen you yet? No. Where is he? He should be right with you. <laughs> You're waiting for Dr. Gesund, too? He should be right with you. Oh, hi, Doctor. You remember George? <laughs> How could I forget? Before your last checkup, I never knew the x-ray machine fit out the window. Huh? Uh. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Baker, have you seen Dr. Gesund? His patients are waiting. Hmm, no. You should check the x-ray room. And you should take off your shirt for the examination. Yeah, sure, Doc. George thought he'd like to be a doctor, because Dr. Baker seemed so smart. And he got to wear a really great white coat. Okay, let's get started. Up in the scale. Whoa, I think you need to cut out the desserts. You've gained some weight. What? I have maybe one donut a month. I run marathons. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> ah, same as last year. Whew. This is how I check his reflexes, George. <laughs> um, my knee's starting to get sore. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I never get to play with a monkey. Dr. Gesund. Okay, take a long, deep breath. Um, oh, I don't like the sound of that breathing. No, I, um, George was... Whoa. <laughs> Ever use a stethoscope, George? I use it to hear things that I can't see. That's the sound of my heart. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you can play with your heart while we go to the x-ray room. Sometimes a little monkey finds a new thing that's more interesting than anything else on Earth. For George, it was the baby giant panda, which was being shown live on the zoo website. Oh. Um, George, are you gonna be much longer? <laughs> well, I need to get work done, and you've been on the computer all day. Oh, is that what you've been watching? The panda cam? <laughs> hey, you know those pictures come from the park zoo right down the block. <laughs> Well, yeah, you can go there and see the panda right in front of you, in the new panda habitat. <laughs> Bye. Be a good little monkey. <laughs> there was one thing on George's mind. Baby panda. Baby panda. Baby panda. <laughs> George didn't want to go the wrong way and lose any panda time. How could he choose a path? Oh. Oh. A nice big map. Uh -huh. <laughs> George decided to take it and follow the pictures to guide him through the zoo. <laughs> He'd found the pandas. That map really worked. This was much better than watching on the computer. George could watch the panda for hours. And he did.
until he felt like that baby would never get any leaves to eat. Nobody here? Guess I can lock up. Time flies when you're watching pandas. George realized he'd better go before they close the zoo. were too confusing. <laughs> George liked visiting Professor Wiseman because she did so many different things. This time, she was helping out on a rocket launch and the man with the yellow hat was going to ride the rocket. So, you are ready to be the first average untrained person shot into space? I sure am. <laughs> There's only room for one, George, but I have a special seat for you right beside me so you can watch. <laughs> this is Dr. Alvin Einstein and Professor Anthony Pizza. Wow. Uh are you related to the famous... No, I'm not. Me neither. The International Space Station's food supply has run out. We found a peanut. It was in the cushion of my chair. This man with the yellow hat will bring your food supply today. So then it's okay to eat the peanut now? Well, should he run away? No, I'm not sure. Oh, yes, I, I think so. I think I do. Yes, you may eat the peanut. So, uh, this is your rocket designed by Professor Wiseman. Oh. It's up to you to launch the food payload at exactly the proper moment. After it detaches from the rocket, it will connect to the space station. Can we count on you? Sure can. Professor Peter and I are loading extra experiments you'll deliver with the food. George wanted to see what these experiments were. <laughs> George, careful! <laughs> this is an expensive, high-tech... Uh, raccoon? They'll live at the space station so we can study how they adapt to life in space. <laughs> <laughs> George could see into all the containers Except this one. What was hidden in there? Show them the most important part. These keypads launch the payload. You hit these two keys on each pad at the same time. On all four at the same time? Yes, at the exact moment the rocket passes the space station.
Uh, I can't. I, I only have two hands. Huh. The keypads were pizza's idea. The raccoon was my idea. The four keypads was yours. Oh, here we go. Check your memos. I specifically remembered when you came up with the four keypads. <gasps> Oh, we have to scrub the mission. Or find an astronaut with four hands. <laughs> hey. <laughs> A warm country day. Georgia's favorite time to go boating. Toy boating, that is. Even a toy boat captain can hit rough seas in his favorite perfect pond. Huh? Ah! Sea captains don't cry, they make repairs. Or ask a friend to. I can have it fixed for you first thing tomorrow morning, Captain. Ah! <laughs> So, at exactly 10 seconds before the first thing the next morning... <laughs> right on time! <laughs> there you go. Ready to set sail again. <laughs> George rushed back to his perfect pond to set sail. <laughs> Now he had a boat, but no pond. And the creek was only a trickle. Where could a whole pond go? Oh. He didn't find his pond, but he found a strange wall in the creek. to the water, it got stuck behind this wall. Hey, George, looking for the beaver family? <laughs> the beavers built their dam to make this great pond. Bet you never see beavers working in the city, huh? <laughs> Yep, that's them now, working in the woods. I took pictures of them. Ah. Don't get too close while they work or they'll get upset. Bye! Ah. <laughs> so these were the beavers. <laughs> George tried to tell them their branches were floating away. He must have gotten too close. If the beavers didn't want him watching, he'd just sail his boat. <laughs> if they wouldn't share their pond, he'd make his own. All he had to do was build a dam like they did. Must be an easier way to get wood for a monkey dam. <gasps> Mrs. Rinkin scrap wood. Been having lots of fun with your boat? <laughs> oh, you want the scrap wood, do you? <laughs> Take it. I'll even hitch the cart to Leslie to help haul it. <laughs> now he had wood. What else would be good for stopping water? It was summertime, and the city was trapped in a heat wave. A real scorcher. 
But there was one city dweller who was not hot. George was in the country, where things were much, much cooler. Go! Oh, whoa! <laughs> you call that a cannonball? I'll show you a cannonball! George loved the country. It had lots of great stuff the city didn't have. You could hear frogs croaking. You could feel the breeze from a hummingbird's wings when it spun around the flowers. At night, you could see a sky full of stars. What you doing, George? Stargazing? No one knows exactly how many stars there are. Not even scientists. Huh? That's when George thought, maybe it's time somebody found out. And since scientists would probably be very grateful, George decided he was just the monkey to count all the stars. The most important rule in star counting was keeping track. George marked each star down on his pad. The two most important rules in star counting were knowing the difference between stars and lightning bugs and keeping track. Third rule, the other two rules don't matter if you don't stay awake. Because when you come back the next night, you can't tell which stars were counted or uncounted. So last night's count can't count. And you have to start all over. The only solution, counting them all fast before you fall asleep. Like this. One, two, three, four, five. 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 But George wasn't fast enough. <sighs> Morning, fellas! Oh, uh, hi, Bill. Uh, George was up late counting stars. Too bad you can't count them now, huh? They're always there, you know. Huh? We just can't see them on account of the sun being so bright. Oh. <laughs> George wasn't so sure about that. He wondered what really happened to stars during the day. Maybe they slept. Or maybe they got blown out like candles. And then again, maybe there was a guy named Lenny who just pulled a switch. Wherever they went, you can't count something that isn't there. George wasn't going to quit. There had to be a way to count stars and go to sleep, too. He just had to figure it out. The big upside down cap. It could be a placekeeper. He could count the stars below it until he had them all, then move to the other sides. He had a system. <laughs> <laughs> 